How's it going, guys? Nothing Public safety. Stop me. I'm all the way. Today we're gonna kind of talk about our security industry and things you really need to consider before getting into the industry. Um, I know I've been gone for a little while, a couple weeks. Uh, it's because I started a new schedule actually a few weeks ago, and uh, I've been adjusting to it. I finally got up nights like I wanted to six months ago. And so I'm kind of readjusting to that. And obviously you can tell I'm a little sick right now. So kind of bear with me as we get through the video. So we're going to kind of talk about things you need to consider when getting into the armed security industry. Um, you know, we're going to talk about different things to consider. And one of the first things we're going to talk about is why are you getting into the industry? Uh, do you want to get paid more? Obviously that's a big consideration. A lot of people have bills to pay and families to feed. So uh, more money is definitely a big consideration. Are you looking to get, you know, are you looking to get involved in the training and possibly, you know, develop some your skills to make yourself more marketable? Um, or are you looking to use this as a possible stepping stone? It may not be a direct stepping stone into something, but it does show some added responsibility where you can carry, you know, a deadly weapon without incident. But the one, the people that this comment is kind of directed towards is those who simply get into armed security because they want to carry a badge and they want to carry a gun and they want to go out there and play police officer. These types of guys are the ones that make the industry look bad and they're the ones that are going to eventually probably end up in criminal or they're going to end up in civil trouble because they're going to brandish their firearm or they're going to pull their firearm on somebody or they're going to have a negligent discharge or they're just going to do something stupid that's going to get them in trouble. I've seen this happen too many times in this industry or someone thinks that just because they strap on a gun that they can go out there and they can do everything that police officers do. And I can tell you right now, if you are one of those guys, then you need to go find something else to do. Because you make the industry look bad, you're a liability to your company, and in all honesty, we don't want you here. So these are, if, one of the litmus tests I kind of use for this is if your company, say you're an armed guard, came out and they're like, you know, maybe say you made $18 now. hour. As an armed guard. And the company came out tomorrow and said, hey, uh, you know, we don't feel like the guns are necessary anymore or for whatever reason they can come down with. Um, we're going to no longer have armed guards, but we're going to pay you guys the same amount of money. So you're still going to make $18 an hour just as an armed guard. Now, if your sole reaction to that is you want to quit or you want to throw a hissy fit about it, then you're probably one of those people. Now, I can understand the argument that, you know, if, if it's a very dangerous type work, dangerous situation um, that they're putting you in and you don't have the means to defend your life because in all honesty it could realistically be necessary, then I can understand your argument. But a lot of cases this is not true. It's mostly guys that want to carry around the gun and you know because they want to go out there and they want to play and look like police officers. So that, again, that's something in consideration is the reason why you're getting into armed security work. The second is the pay. You know, I believe that security guards should be paid fair wages. I think everyone should be paid, paid fair wages. But you're adding an additional liability by adding a, a deadly weapon or even other defensive weapons to to your arsenal of tools. Um, you know, and I, I think that when you do this, it definitely should come, become with additional compensation because you're adding additional liability, and a lot of times you're adding additional training. Um, you know, but it's kind of up to you to determine how much you're willing to work for. I've seen companies offer 50 cents more, go to their armed guards. I've seen companies where it's maybe 4 or $5 more going armed. Uh, you kind of need to make that consideration and determination when you're deciding, you know, whether you want to work armed or not. I can tell you for a fact there's plenty of unarmed gigs uh, in security where you can make fairly decent money, uh, and you might even make more than a lot of armed guys. And I can tell you that... In a lot of places, aren't becoming getting an armed security license can definitely open up a lot of doors for you. So again, you're kind of making that determination for yourself about, you know, what you're willing to accept as compensation for your work. Um, you know, I, I, again, I, as I stated previously, I believe that all security guards should be paid a fair wage. But again, you run the gauntlet of, of different securities, and obviously some are going to get paid more than others. You know, the guys at the nuclear facility in my opinion, definitely deserve to make more than the guys sitting at, you know, the truck the truck gate or, you know, be, being our gate or even, or even a lot of patrol jobs, you know, guys. Um, you know, there's diff definitely a difference in training, difference in duties, different in responsibilities, and definitely difference in liabilities. And so these are all things you definitely need to consider uh, 
when deciding to accept or decline an armed position or apply for an armed position. Uh, the third point I'm going to make is training. And is kind of what type of training are you going to receive for this new kind of job venture that you want to do? Um, I've noticed most security companies pretty much stick with the bare minimum. Uh, they do whatever the state requires and they do nothing more. Um, my state, it is simply a 16-hour course uh, with a qualification at the end. Uh, and then a refresher every other year, which is an 8-hour course, and then, again, a requalification. Um, you know, I'm not an industry expert. But I can tell you from the years of experience that I do have that most companies do not do enough to ensure that their guards are properly trained, proper have proper knowledge, on a variety of different topics to be able to do the job effectively and, again, understand the liability of this type of work. Um, you know, I've worked at places where, again, the minimum was the uh, what the state mandated, and I've been in other places where, you know, you did quarterly trainings, um, you know, yearly recalls, and I feel that's that, that in all honesty is a very happy medium for most places. You know, yearly recalls, quarterly trainings it could be any number of different trainings you could do uh, i feel like a lot of companies skimp over very important aspects like not only how to shoot but also when to shoot um you know uh you know that's what gets a lot of security guards in trouble is they definitely know how to shoot but they definitely don't know when to shoot and when it's you know situations using sound judgment when to draw you know when to actually deploy your weapon uh i don't think there's nearly enough training in the security field uh, in that area. And then another one is understanding legal liability, including criminal and civil, and kind of what happens if you're ever used in a, if you're ever involved in a deadly force type situation. I believe a lot of the training kind of gets skipped over, and like I said, it leaves guards very vulnerable because they don't understand, you know, the legal ramifications of using deadly force or really any type of force on anybody and so that these are things you really need to look at is what type of training you're going to receive uh and also your job duties as well and kind of how they tie in together a uh, quick side story um uh, in my state because of the type of work that i do i'm actually not required to have a guard license but i usually do because i like to pick up side work every once in a while which in my state contract work does require um a security license uh, I went to a class, it was my, I think my annual renewal, so I had to go do a requalification, which is the eight-hour course, um, and I was in a class with about 25 other people. I can tell you for a fact that most of the people in the class had never held a firearm, owned a firearm, shot a firearm, literally had anything to do with the firearm. And, you know, why I don't feel you should have to be some John Wick, former special ops type shooter to be an armed security guard I do feel like when getting into it, you should have the fundamental understanding of how firearms work, how to, you know, side alignment, grip, you know, all of these things that are, are fairly basic for even the newest of firearms owners before you try to jump in this field. Too many companies are hiring guys who have no firearm experience whatsoever, and they're expecting, you know, these training classes to get them up to speed in, you know, in only 16 hours. You know, I can understand a lot of this logic for some police departments because there are a lot of police departments where, you know, new recruits will spend, you know, could be up to 100 hours or more on the range. You know, that in honesty feels like adequate time where you get someone comfortable with a firearm. You can't do that in 16 hours. I'm sorry. And, and the fact that only probably half of that or less is spent on the range itself. So, again, something to consider, guys, if you have absolutely no firearms training or really any experience with firearms, you may want to look at possibly getting some before uh, applying for an armed security job. You know, take a basics course, a fundamental, you know, course on firearms and firearm safety. And then obviously, you know, hone some skills before applying for a lot of these jobs. As long as it's going to make you, it's going to probably be better for you in the long run than just going out and applying and expecting the company to give you the training that you need. And the last topic I'm going to touch on, guys, is... If you're getting into this industry, you need to kind of understand what carrying a firearm entails. And it's pretty much in a professional capacity, it's you're now responsible for defending your own life or defending the lives of someone else. You may not have a legal obligation to, 
But I know a lot of people, when they check on this responsibility, they feel like they have a moral obligation. And if you, in your heart of hearts, know for a fact that you could never take the life of somebody else, including to defend your own life, then in all honesty, you may want to reconsider this line of work. You know, I always tell people that you never know what's going to happen. You never know how you're going to react in a situation until you've been in it. But, you know, if you know for a fact that it's not going to, you're not going to have the ability to defend your life, then you need to go find a new line of work. I worked with a partner at the time who this was the exact same scenario. He told me one time where we were on route saying, I don't think I could ever take the life of somebody else, even to defend my own life or defend my partner's life. You know, I didn't judge him for it. You know, I didn't make fun of him for it. But I did kind of tell him at that point that I didn't really want to be partners with him anymore because, you know, understanding from my perspective is I have a family that I want to go home to and I need a partner that, you know, in their mind could at least perceive the ability of defending his life or defending my life, um, you know, if if the time ever came for that. You know, that's kind of the trust that you put in in your partner, you know. And a lot of, a lot of the partners I had, I, I definitely trusted them with my life. Um, but to kind of... And that somber note, we're going to go on a little more positive note, guys. I just really want to thank everybody for uh, the channel growth. You know, I've seen a massive uptick in watch time and views and subscribers and all of these things kind of factor into the YouTube algorithm when I get, you know, it helps me bump up my search results, which gets me more exposure. Um, you know, I definitely have a big shout out for the Reddit community because a lot of my external traffic comes from the Reddit community. And so I want to thank everyone on that forum. Uh, if you guys have never been there and you're in the security industry or you're interested and have maybe job questions, you know, we do a lot of uh, industry type questions, but we also have a lot of fun and stuff like that. Uh, check it out on Reddit. It's just our security guards uh, Reddit forum. And then also kind of a little plug here, guys. Um, you know, I don't know the owner, of, uh, the owner of this podcast. You know, I've never talked to him. He's not telling me to plug him at all. Um, but I, if you guys get the opportunity, I definitely listen to the Security Sucks podcast. Um, it's very informative. I actually really enjoyed it. Uh, I was listening to it while I was uh, doing some homework earlier. Um, you know, it's it's he takes he has a true and honest discussion about real perspectives in the security industry from you know low level guards, you know entry level guards, all the way up to CEOs of companies. And he has a true honest discussion about the industries. Uh, you know. Issues people are facing in the industry, stories, interviews, you know, pretty much everything you want in a podcast right there. And so if you guys get the opportunity, go and check it out. It's uh, www.securitysexmedia.com. Um, very informative. I think a lot of you guys will enjoy it. Um, but that's kind of it for me now, guys. Um, you know, it's almost the weekend, so I hope everyone has a safe weekend. And, you know, if you're working, you know, stay safe on shift and, you know, try to go out there and make the world a better place, guys. Mm-hmm.